G'day viewers, how the devil are you? One of my subscribers asked me if I thought I could make a burner out of a hole in the ground. Well, I not only managed to do that, I managed to make it portable as well. Let me show you how I managed it. The first challenge with making this burner was actually a safety issue, i.e. how to avoid having the missus kill me for digging up a petunia garden or a lawn. So I went next door to the vacant block, got some dirt, an old fire extinguisher bottle and packed it into this plastic uh, drum that I cut the top off. A bit of uh, mud pie to, to make it all nice and pretty and relive some of my uh, long past childhood and there we go one portable dirt burner as you can see i've just got the vaporizing tube put in it there and uh, it uh, worked quite well it was a little bit close to the to the bottom uh, i didn't know how that was going to go but it turned out it wasn't much problem at all as you can see the standard setup it's connected to the blower and it just feeds the air in the hole there is for the oil to be uh, drip fed in from the tank that sits behind it. I also tried a new setup with the oil control. I added a gate valve, which is a quarter inch behind the regular ball valve uh, cutoff. The idea of this was that the gate valve takes about four and a half turns from uh, fully closed to open, so it gives me a lot more precise control than what the larger uh, gate valve behind it does. I left that in place because then I can have the gate valve set for the flow I want and also be able to shut the oil flow down completely without mucking up the settings that I've got. To start the burner off, I just basically put some uh, oil in it, just let it dribble in a bit. The idea was that I was going to start it on uh, gas, so once the gas gets the oil a bit hot, it will vaporize, take off, and that allows me to swap the gas injection back for the oil to be blown in on the part that I just showed you. I didn't worry about drying the, uh, the dirt first because I figured being wet, it would actually repel the oil and let it pool in the bottom, which is what I wanted. If it had soaked in, then I might have had problems with it cracking or breaking away or just not being able to get it to light at all. The first thing to get things cooking was slopping a bit of the old uh, starting fluid, as I'll call it, uh, a bit of uh, flaming rag and whooshka, off we go. The b blower I've got is a little bit strong for this at the start-up. So I just throttle it up a little bit by plugging it and unplugging it just to get a turning over. Uh, then one that's uh, got a decent flame and I can see it's not going to go out, then I can just leave it to run even though it's restricted down. It still does um, suck a, a quite a bit of air past the gaps in the blower and give you quite a good output as well. Probably more than some of my other blowers when they're actually running flat out. From there I just let it uh, cook off a bit just to dry out the, uh, the portable mud pack and to let it harden up and get hot. Unfortunately I did have a bit of problems with plan B in that I couldn't quite get the heat in the uh, setup to vaporize the oil so I went back to my initial plan A and stuck a gas feed in the inlet of the uh, vaporizing burner pipe there and just let it cook off a bit with that. I had put some uh, oil in the, the bottom of the uh, burner as you saw initially and that hadn't really taken off so I just let it run a bit until I could see that the oil was getting hot coming up to heat and then when that started burning I could just take the gas feed out and just run it purely on oil. Only took a couple of minutes and not a lot of gas but it was a real quick and easy way of getting it going. Now unfortunately things weren't quite going to plan. 
I took the gas out, I changed it over to oil, and the output was pretty dismal. I tried throttling it up and playing around, but as you can see, all I got was a flame out. Bit of a disappointment, so I took my sorry worthless backside inside once it started raining just to cap things off and to take a good hard look at myself as to where the hell I'd gone wrong with this. It's not often that I, uh, I get a bit of a, uh, a failure, but in this case I did, so I went off to have a look at what it was. The conclusion I actually came up with was it wasn't actually the burner itself, but if you saw my uh, last video with the vaporizing burner, I'd cut some slots and drilled some holes in the pipe further up. I could see when it was burning that the oil was escaping there and it was blowing out quite high. The oil wasn't really getting to the bottom of the, uh, the burner, which made the uh, heat not where I wanted it. So, licking my wounds, I came back the next day I welded up all the holes and the slots that I'd cut in that bit of pipe, putting it back to the very original setup that I had to start with, and it all worked pretty well. Again, you can see here I've just thrown in a, uh, a bit of starting fluid, lit it up, and uh, off she went. things up to heat I was able to uh, open up the air give it a bit more fuel and she was running like a scalded cat it wasn't uh, very difficult really to get this lit the biggest problem was as I said that the uh, vaporizing tube that I'd cut up before wasn't really a uh, an effective modification so once that was put back to what I knew what worked the whole thing worked um, pretty well Obviously the plastic burned off a bit, but I was surprised how well that lasted. After I ran the thing for quite some time, it was still pretty cool, and it was only just the top of it exposed to the heat that really burnt. I could still put my hand on the side of that plastic, and after half an hour, it still wasn't even looking like melting. Here I was just playing around a bit with the positioning of the air tube. It does make a real significant difference as to where it is. Centered does seem to work the best for sure. Otherwise you can get the flame burning a little bit to one side and that tends to allow uh, some of the oil to spit out a bit unburned. Now this brings me to today's safety tip. Ah, there's lots of you zealots and whingers out there that uh, clearly don't have a lot of DIY experience or any sort of intelligence at all for that matter. So, while this might look to you like a bit of an outdoor thunder box without a lid, don't try and sit on it and take a dump. I know some of you probably bat for the other team and by jingos, you'll get a back crack and sack wax like you've never had before. This thing has some power, and by geez, you'll know about it. So, remember, as I always say, safety third, and be careful of what you have no idea in the world about. Now, being that a furnace is about as useful as tits on a ball if it won't melt anything, I got some little pieces of alley I had laying round, and I dropped them in. I wasn't sure how well it would burn, whether it would actually go below the flame front where it's pretty cool, but you got to give these things a go. Also gave me the opportunity to do my favourite thing with these, and that's go from nothing to flat out straight off. As you can see, even the uh, dirt burner has plenty of retained heat, and that just allows the oil to be lit up straight away, even if it's even when it's been sitting there for a while with uh, no flame front in it at all. Here's another look into the uh, the jaws of fury and hell. Uh, I've got the thing obviously running very low here. It's impossible to get near when the thing's cranked up. And even still, I managed to burn the foam windshield clean off the end of my microphone. Didn't that stink a treat? Never mind, doesn't matter. 
this is where it's cranked up a bit more from a little now by this time I've had the thing running quite a while and as you can see it's still plenty cool on the outside I was a little bit surprised about this myself because there's nothing in that other than just dirt that I dug out of the yard next door there's no refractory or insulation whatsoever and as I say I was quite surprised at how well just the common dirt does insulate it wasn't even drying out all that much on the outside even though the inside was well and truly baked to a crisp for the oil burning connoisseurs and you know pyromaniacs out there here's a little bit of burner porn for you a nice close-up of a flame fair dinkum you could put that in your fire inside and sit there and watch it for hours couldn't you and the best part is there's no chopping up wood or cleaning out ashes or any of that other unthinkable hard work just get some old waste oil throw it in and you can be warm and cozy for a long long time so here we go again with my favorite little party trick with burners just take them from zero to full tilt with a nice big whoosh gas straight off it never fails to impress even though the thing had been running for a few minutes without any uh, fuel going into it at all there was no trouble with the light up just hit the fuel stand back and enjoy the show the gate valve did work very well it does allow a lot of control and you can turn the flame up or down pretty much as to what you want it still will just work on small increments but it is very repeatable and easy to adjust you can actually put the, the level of the flame anywhere you want even on fixed air when you vary the air output as well I could turn it down lower than what I'd ever been able to before This is another shot that shows you how well the dirt holds the heat and stands up to the fire. Very little deterioration at all and it was allowing me to have a nice low output as well. It seems to hold the heat localised which will vaporise the oil but not transmit it to the outside. As you can see here the plastic container was still intact and I've probably been running this thing a good 40 minutes by now. After the alley had been in there a good 10 minutes, I uh, shut the thing down, pulled the, the vaporizer tube out, and that's what I had. As you can see, well and truly liquid aluminium. I'm just scraping the bit of the slag there off the top, and uh, the aluminium was well and truly melted. You could easily put a, a, a tap type thing on this and just drain the, the molten alley out into a container if you were doing it for scrapping or trying to separate from steel or other metals. Here we are, fast forward to the next day. I went out to check this thing about eight hours after I shut it off and it was still too damn hot to put my hand anywhere near. I may not wear gloves but I'm not stupid. With a little bit of uh, coaxing I got a nice little bit of aluminium plate out of there. So no question that it melts alley real easy. Anyway I will uh, do another uh, vid on this how I improved it. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, video of my portable dirt burner. If you like this one, you'll probably enjoy some of my other videos. So please don't forget to look at my channel. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, like, and by all means, comment. Thanks very much for watching.